First and 10 officially from the 34, and we get our first look at Mike McCurdy leading this Penn offense, which put up 29 points in an overtime win against Navy two weeks ago. Oh, boy, what a year he, he's having. He's averaging over 250 yards uh, a game. He's about to go over 1,000 yards, probably on the first or second play here. Handoff Washington. Tries to find the corner. Moves to the 30-yard line just about. A short gain on first down. And second down's coming up for the Quakers. Yeah, fairly safe play to start off. He tried to get to the outside. The linebackers on Chestnut Hill stayed home. Uh, were able to push him out of bounds after about a three-yard gain. So Penn with a second and seven play coming up from Chestnut Hills 31, the first drive of the game for the Quakers, a team that averages 27 points a game, good for third best in the CSFL. Here is McCurdy with four wide. He's got Klaus on his right hip. Man in motion again, this time it's Del Cueto. McCurdy, his first throw, fires. That's a catch for Aiden Kelly, immediately tackled by Nathan Moser near the 27-yard line, another short gain third and short coming up for the Quakers. Yeah, a little short of the first down, but you've got three downs to try to get it before you have to decide what to do, so you might as well use them. Kelly also is having a heck of a year. Yeah, Aiden Kelly, second in the league in receiving yards per game with 78. I guess who's number one? It's Andrew Sutton. Andrew Sutton. Sutton, number 11 in blue. We'll talk about him a lot as this game goes along and his journey to Penn Sprint football. Third and two from the 26, a fake handoff. McCurdy throws, and it's incomplete. Under pressure that time, Jonathan Baldwin and Joshan Perez applying the pressure. Fourth and two for the Quakers. Yeah, it looks like a little mix-up uh, between McCurdy and Marcus Jones. I, I think McCurdy thought he was going to cut in, just get enough yardage for the first down, and he seemed to want to go a little deeper. Interesting to see what Penn does here. They, they do have a good kicker, so uh, field goal's not out of the question, but this is an aggressive team. You need a couple yards early in the game. Let's see what we have. Remember, two weeks ago, Penn converted a fourth and 12 yep. against Navy early in the game. It went for a touchdown to Chaz Augustini, so there's really no fear with this Quaker offense, and the competition now is a little bit lesser, so you can imagine why they're going for it on fourth and two. McCurdy from the gun. Fake handoff. He'll take it himself. Bus left. That's a first down right. for the co-MVP last year. Right around the 20-yard line. Penn on the doorstep of the red zone with its first first down of the game. Yeah, that was an option play. Uh, McCurdy saw that the, everybody was king on the running back. He faked it to the running back, kept it himself. He only needed a couple of yards. He saw some green ahead of him and got there. McCurdy didn't really run the first three games, but two weeks ago against Navy, broke out 74 yards Ooh, on the ground and a touchdown. Yeah. Now that the season's gone along a little bit, Bill Wagner letting his star quarterback open up a little bit and get out in open space. Fresh set from the 20, McCurdy on first down. He's looking for all of it here. Good protection, throws oh. Kelly in and out of his hands. Oh, he had his man in the end zone. A fairly high throw, but one that Aiden Kelly probably should come down with that's in a second a, and that's 10. That's a catchable ball, it was a little high, but if the quarterback hits your hand, you, you, you gotta grab those. That was identical to the pass that McCurdy hit Chaz Augustini with, that first well, touchdown yeah, against Navy. Yep. Kelly. Six-foot sophomore, good height. The Livingston, New Jersey native cannot come down with the game's first touchdown. So it's second and 10 from the 20-yard line. McCurdy with three wide to his right. A little mo movement in the line there. Looking no flag, all over here. For it. Oh, Kelly, Kelly again. Oh, that's, that's a flag. flag. Looks yep. like pass interference on Kadeem Pankey. And the Quakers are going to be oh so close to scoring the game's first touchdown. Another good route from Kelly and a pretty good throw again. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, Panky's going to have a rough day today uh, try, trying to guard Kelly. Kelly is, uh, knows how to get open, and when he gets near the end zone, he sniffs that end zone. He wants to get in there. Kelly, the word that's used to describe him is fast. fast. And usually he gets lined up with a linebacker or a less experienced defensive back because Andrew Sutton gets a lot of the attention, and so Kelly can roam free. That's the thing when having two star receivers like this who can both get open, it's hard to double team anybody. And could you imagine this Penn team with Max Jones, the injured oh boy. running back? They would oh be boy. darn near unstoppable. So it's first and goal from the five yard line. A net of 15 yards on the pass interference call. And the Quakers are now well within the red zone. Penn, very good in the red zone this year. 83% of their trips end in touchdowns. I was just going to say, normally a football team brings in the beef here.
when you're that close, but of course the beef is they're all the same size. McCurdy hand off Diorio. He's the goal line back, but cannot find a hole to the left side. Nice tackle that time by Mike McElhenney, the middle linebacker for Chestnut Hill, and it's second and goal. Now against Navy, uh, Diorio had some success punching it in from the 3-4-5 yard line. I guess Penn had the same idea. They usually run him up the middle. Um, you know, he's not a lot of speed, but he's a good power runner. So they usually run him up the middle. Now they didn't have time. Yeah, against Navy two weeks ago, Diorio, three rushes, two went for touchdowns. <laughs> Incredibly efficient game for the man who also plays defensive back on this Penn team. Full house set for the Quakers. Marcus Jones to the bottom of your screen. The lone wide out. They go to him, and it's swatted down at Beautiful. the goal line. Nathan Moser with the breakup. That's his seventh pass deflection of the year. That's tops in the CSFL. Yeah, I'll tell you, he, he played that uh, well. Looked like uh, Kelly was going to get open there, and uh, he just came in there, swatted the ball away, did exactly what a defender is supposed to do. So Chestnut Hill standing tall on this first Penn offensive possession. Made a mistake earlier, the Quakers score either a field goal or a touchdown 83% of the time. They get a touchdown 58% of the time, so still a very good percentage. So more than half the time, they put it in the end zone. Here is McCurdy, third and goal, fakes the handoff to Yorio, rolls right, looking end zone, oh. caught! Touchdown, Marcus Jones, they found him on the second try, and the Quakers are on the board, 6-0. Yeah, Marcus Jones ran a, a simple down and out route, headed to the... Uh, Sideline, McCurdy just rolled out, found him open, and laid it in there. Touchdown, Quakers. That's the third TD of the year for Marcus Jones, a player who was a defender his first two seasons, now a junior, and his 6'2 height really helps him get open and get past these defensive backs on other teams. Another score for him. You know, you find that in the Sprint Football League, a lot of players do change positions. They came in here thinking they'd be one thing, and you end up finding an opportunity in another spot. Mario Del Cueto for the extra point, and it is through and into the stands. So a good start. The Quakers get really good field position and capitalize. A fourth down conversion plus a touchdown pass. Mike McCurdy over 1,000 yards passing and eight more touchdowns through the air this season. A remarkable career. Four straight seasons with 1,000 yards passing. Unbelievable.